Any activity or data that may originate from the missing kit will be flagged and isolated from the system. The kit will not be useful to anyone. Whoever has stolen it should know that it will not be useful to them because it has been blacklisted. The Commission has also deployed 465 660 temporary staff towards this, uh, the success of the 9th August general election. This includes presiding officers, deputy presiding officers, poll clerks, and security. I wish to take this opportunity to thank the team, my vice chair, commissioners, the CEO, and the entire staff of the IEPC who have worked tirelessly to ensure that uh, tomorrow's election is a success. I salute the fellow returning officers across the country who are, I know have, have not been sleeping, and from today, they'll have sleepless nights until the results are announced in the counties and constituencies across the country. I call upon all our temporary poll officials to discharge their duties with utmost integrity and commitment to serve our country, Kenya. However, uh, as a commission, we have received information that five presiding officers and two clerks in Diwa constituency were allegedly caught by members of the public in a home state of uh, an associate of a contestant, what is, was believed to be a meeting to plan uh, or influence the outcome of elections, allegedly so. Four of the poll officials were arrested and recorded statements on Diwa police station, and as a result, the returning officer from Diwa constituency has dismissed the said four officials and replaced them with others. In Webuye East, Bungoma County, two deputy presiding officers were allegedly in a meeting with a candidate. The two have since been arrested and uh, dismissed from duty and replaced with others. In Webuya West, Bungoma County, a presiding officer allegedly attended a meeting convened by a candidate in a hotel, a hotel within Matete sub-county Kakamega County. The presiding officer has been dismissed from duty and replaced. The commission has also been informed of destruction of election materials in Shuka, Igambangombe, which were being transported from the IBS warehouse in Chuka to Taraka. We have since deployed our officers to liaise with the local police to review the incident, and we shall give a report on that. The Commission takes great exception of polling officials who contravene the code of conduct for poll officials and will not stay to take stern action against any official found to be in breach of the code of the Code of Conduct and Election Offences Act. On issues of security, the Commission has partnered with the National Police Service and we have trained and deployed over 150,000 police officers and we confirm that there will be two officers per polling station throughout the country when the polls commence tomorrow. These officers are already being deployed today with the polling officials to the respective uh, polling stations. However, on matter of security, we have two incidents that we wish to inform the country about in Trukana and Mandera. In Trukana County, bandits attacked and burned down homes in a village within Capedo, uh, Naipeiton Ni Ni Ward, and displaced populations expected to vote in three polling stations. The returning officer in consultation with the security team and stakeholders has recommended that the polling station be conducted in the nearby uh, polling center, so arrangements will be done and the voters will be informed accordingly where they'll be polling in that particular area. In Mandera County, a known number of people burned down two classrooms in Hareri Primary School, which is a gazetted polling station in Kalalio Ward in Mandera East constituency. Security has been beefed up and polling will proceed. 
as planned with the remaining part of the, the buildings which has not been affected. The Commission has set up fully-fledged call centre where poll officials and the general public can call a toll-free number to make inquiries and report incidents related to the 2022 general elections. Just wish to remind the public that, that the toll-free numbers are 1543 and 1544. And we encourage Kenyans to make good use of these numbers for purposes of seeking information from the Commission on Incidents Happening on the Ground. We also have this uh, media center where we give media briefings like we are doing today, and this will continue on a very regular basis as we get into the elections uh, uh, tomorrow. I just want to confirm that the Commission has accredited a total of 4,850 local and international journalists to ensure free flow of information and accurate reporting of election results uh, to the public. The Commission has already shared with the media, political parties, observers, the secure formats and templates in which results will be shared to enable them to integrate with the results transmission system in order to receive, process, tally, accurate results as they are received by the Commission. We call upon the media to remain true to their role of providing comprehensive and objective coverage of the elections as, as possible, especially in relaying or reporting results. The media can, of course, tally results, as we have said, but not declare uh, the winners. I want to say a few things about activities of polling tomorrow. All polling stations will open on 9th August 2022 at 6 a.m. to 5 p.m., where there's a delay in opening or interruption in voting at a polling station, the presiding officer shall extend hours of polling by the amount of time lost. Voters will be, who will be on the queue at the time of closing, the polling station will be, will be allowed to vote. The commission will ensure that every registered Kenyan voter gets a chance to exercise their right to vote for their preferred candidate. To achieve this, the commission has put legal technological and administrative structures in place to ensure that all voters have an improved voter experience as they cast their vote. As part of its mandate, the Commission has accredited a total of 120,731 domestic and international observers and monitors, out of which 50,231 are observers, 70,500 are monitors, and they come from 872 organizations. That is uh, 795 domestic observer organizations and 77 international observer organizations. Also want to say something about our results transmission system. The Commission has put in place an election results management framework, ERMF, that provides the workflow of results from the polling station to the constituency and national tallying center in accordance with the Elections Act and regulations. The system allows the presiding officer to open the results transmission system application after the close of polling. The presiding officer shall be able to capture and transmit the image of the a series that's for presidential 34 A series form. In transmitting the results, the results transmission system only sends the A series results form, which has a QR code, once. It cannot transmit more than once. Persons authorized to be at the polling station include media, observers, polling station agents who will be allowed to take an image of the original results from that for A. Polling station agents of presidential candidates will be issued with a carbonated copy of the results form that for A. The results announced at the polling station will be final. At telling centers, proper planning and management of telling centers plays a central role in the conduct of credible election, for it is at the telling center where results are collected and declared for respective positions. And for strict avoidance of doubt, 
let me say the following, that the Commission has three levels of tallying centres, namely constituency tallying centre, county tallying centres and national tallying centre right here at Bomas. So at the polling station they will be counting and filling of result forms. At the constituency tallying centre, tallying and declaration of the member of national assembly, member of county assembly, collection of presidential, gubernatorial and senatorial and county as woman assembly, member of parliament results. So tallying and declaration of member of national assembly, member of county assembly is done at constituency, but also at constituency there is collection of presidential results, gubernatorial results, senatorial results, and count woman member of national assembly results. At the county tallying center, we have the final tallying and declaration of gubernatorial and senatorial and count woman member of national assembly count woman member of national assembly results. So those are declared at the county uh, tallying center. Then at the national center is the final tallying and declaration of presidential results from all the polling stations. So let me assure you that at the national tallying center, which I'm in charge of as the uh, national returning officer, we are ready to undertake this exercise and we have put everything in place uh, to make it happen. And I just want to thank all who have been involved in these processes, all stakeholders who have worked with us to prepare for this general election. I also want to finally say something to the Kenyan voters. In closing, let us now cast our eyes to focus to the patriotic duty that lies before us the opportunity to express our voices through the ballot. To this end, I'm calling upon every registered Kenyan voter, both here in Kenya and in the diaspora, to show up to their respective polling stations to exercise their democratic right. At this moment in time, let us draw inspiration from the 2010 constitution that vests all sovereign power to the people of Kenya who may exercise it, either directly or through their elected representatives. Let us collectively rise up and show the world that Kenya is a vibrant democracy. On our part as a commission, we shall ensure that every vote counts because that we shall ensure to count every vote because every vote counts. So for Kenyans, this is our time, our moment uh, to make it happen. Uh, before I close uh, this afternoon, uh, we received uh, information from our lawyers in the Court of Appeal that the Court of Appeal has stated the judgment of the High Court which uh, directed the Commission to cross out the register uh, as, uh, as a complementary to the Kim's kids. Uh, remember, the Court of Appeal has directed that we follow the guidelines given by the Court of Appeal in the case of uh, uh, NASA versus IEBC which gave guidelines that the Commission followed as we prepared for this election. And so uh, the, the, today the court has stated the High Court order which directed that in addition to following the guidelines of using the fiscal register as a last resort if the Kimskits fails, the High Court had directed that we also cross the register at the time of verification. So the Commission uh, shall stand guided by the orders of the Court of Appeal this afternoon and we have accordingly directed our staff, who had been adequately trained, uh, to now follow the procedure as laid down by the Court of Appeal, that they'll have the fiscal register with them and will only use it if all the Kim's kids fail in that particular uh, polling station. So thank you very much. That's our brief this afternoon. As I said, we shall engage on more briefings as and when any situation arises. Uh, thank you. If you have any questions. Uh, can we have somebody managing these questions? Uh, who is? Yeah. Uh, good evening, Commissioner. I wanted to ask, my name is Ivy from Kenyans.co.k. Um, what measures have you put in place to ensure that the right ballot papers are delivered to the right counties, given the discovery of the Kilifi gubernatorial papers in the Mombasa pilot? 
Thank you. Kwa majina naitua Emmanuel Kirongi kutoka TV Magaribi na ningependa kuuliza swala hili ambalo lina fungamana na madai yaliyojibuliwa na uh, mbunge wa Kadundu ya Kusini Moses Kuria uh, kwamba huenda kukawa na udanganyifu kwenye uh, zoezi hili nzima la uchakuzi uh, akapeana kuwa kaunti ya wazingishu huenda ikathirika pakubwa uh, kwamba kuna makaratasi ambayo yatatoka katika ikulu ya Nakuru kuelekea Eldoret na akapeana nambari ya gari ya usajili ya 8, 8, 8, 53T Je, na tumeona tena idara ya DCI imechukulia au zito swala hili ama madai hayo wewe kama mwenyekiti wa tume ya IEBC useni wako ni upi ama mtazamo wako asante Excuse me let's have three a set of questions they respond then we proceed to another So let's proceed My name is Irene Mongi from Capital FM my question is in the case of Bobuye East where ballot papers were found in the house of a uh, presiding officer, what is the protocol procedure in terms of transporting this material? Also, the case in Chuka, what was the protocol procedure in terms of transporting these materials? Were they being transported without, without the security officials, or what was happening in those two particular incidences? Also, the commission had said that by August 6th, the strategic and non strategic materials will be delivered to the polling stations. Why are we having the issue of ballot papers, for printing out the ballot papers, mix up of ballot papers, a day before the elections. Mm, yeah, we, we can deal with that. Um, the logistics, uh, we have mentioned earlier in the week that all logistics have been done, materials are in the constituencies. Today is the day then that uh, the presiding officers put all the materials using the checklist to then go to the respective polling stations. And in the process, they arrange everything in their respective boxes. All the presiding officer, the deputy, the four clerks, and two police officers then accompany the materials to the respective polling stations. This exercise is what's ongoing today. Some areas are vast. They have to leave early to be able to to get there on time. Remember, polling starts at five in, I mean, six in the morning, and these officers then have to stay either at the polling station. In fact, most of them sleep at the polling station waiting for the first uh, water to come at six in the morning. So in arranging those materials and following communication, I think from the CEO is here, uh, they were then instructed to check the contents of what they are carrying. And in the process of doing so is when a discovery was made that led to the issue around the four elective uh, positions. So the issue you are raising about polling materials, all polling materials, strategic materials are accompanied by police officers. And all of them were accompanied. So the, the, we, didn't, we talked about Webuye, there was nothing about polling materials found in an individual's house. There was no ballot papers in an individual's house. I don't know where you got that from. Uh, the issue of Webuye were clerks meeting, allegedly meeting with a, a candidate, but there was no issue about materials involved. The issue around Moses Kuria, I'm not privy to that uh, information or tweet or whatever it is. I'm not aware, but uh, all I want to say is that all ballot uh, papers are in the respective constituencies. There are no ballot papers anywhere else, and um, I'm not privy to that information. Maybe unless any of the commissioners has anything uh, to say about that. Uh, so we, we, we don't have that information. I don't even know whether the DCI is investigating. That, uh, we have not been informed as a commission about such investigations. Okay, you can share with us if you have information, and then we can give you feedback. Please, yeah. We can take another assess. Yep. I'm Brian Chino from The Standard. What do you attribute the errors in Kakamega and Mombasa to? And also yeah. tied to, 
Yes. Uh, also tied to the same Moremi Mwangi from uh, Haitian News. Yes, Moremi. When, when did uh, these ballot papers that uh, have errors uh, land in the country? And when did it come to your attention that there are errors about it and why is the country learning about it only at the end of the election? And in addition to that, as a commission, are you concerned uh, that the suspension of uh, the specific elections in the counties and the constituencies could affect the turnout in uh, the other elective seats, including the presidency? Okay. Um, can deal with that? Yes. This is, this, these are four elective positions out of uh, the 1,879. Uh, four out of 1,879. We have had cases where there could be errors. We have had countries postpone elections because of uh, all elections because of uh, issues around issues like ballot papers. But we are talking about four positions out of uh, 1,879. Now, the error came out as a result of uh, a mix up at the printing. A factory. The commission forwarded the ballot proofings as per the candidate's specifications. And I believe the CEO and team can attest to that. Uh, what we have been shown is proper proofings. So our ballot proofings were sent to the printers, uh, but the error occurred at the, uh, at the printing factory. And they are going to correct that error. And uh, in, I think in the course of uh, this week we shall be able then to announce the earliest possible date when those elections can be held. So it is uh, an error at the printing factory, not at the commission level. I think the concern is at which point did they learn in the country and when did you learn about the error? Because it's only becoming a matter Yes, uh, I've mentioned in my briefing that uh, this morning is when ballot papers were opened and uh, we learned of those errors this particular morning. But on the face of it, the papers were properly marked. If you have been at the, the warehouse, I don't know that you've been there, the face of it shows the, the documentation was properly marked, but on opening the ballot papers, that's when the errors were discovered at this morning. Remember, these ballot papers are sealed. They're not supposed to be tampered with. And for purpose of transporting them to the respective polling stations, that exercise in the morning uncovered uh, those errors. We cannot know. I think your case is good. But I expect that Kenyans will turn up to vote for the five elective positions. And uh, I believe that should not affect the outcome of, uh, or rather, the voter turnout. But we are here tomorrow with you. We shall follow up the proceedings. And we cannot, we don't preempt Kenya. We should encourage them to turn up and vote for the five elective positions instead of uh, casting aspersions on and creating a story around uh, uh, what uh, uh, turnout. Uh, but let's encourage Kenyans, let's call on the, every Kenyan to turn up and vote for the other five elective positions in those four uh, elective areas. Um, my name is Jojo Rido, um, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you mentioned about the ruling and the stay, and you said uh, to the that effect that uh, in the manual register will only be referred to should there be a failure of the Kim's gate. Yes. The question is about the failure. Is it a general failure or when one individual or one voter comes and realizes that their name is not there, but then the manual register is showing that they are there. Maybe just a few cases or a general case. I hope you get my question. I get your question, and uh, we have actually looked at it in you know, our previous uh, presses. You, the voters register in the Kim's kit is exactly the same register which is printed. Everything is the same. So if you are not in the Kim's kit, then you are not in the fiscal register. It's as simple as that. Yeah. So you cannot miss in the Kim's kit and be in the fiscal register. Because it's the it's a, it's a way you, you, you print a document from your, your, your what document. It's the same. Yeah, so we don't expect that you are missing, I mean, missing, you are missing the Kim's kit and you are in the fiscal register. What we are saying is uh, in terms of the court of appeal, uh, 
decision that then we followed as a guideline. You turn up to be verified biometrically. If you are not in the biometric, you can't identify your biometrical, then you are identified alphanumerically using your ID or passport number. If then uh, you, you are there, then that's, okay. that's fine. But if the Kim's kit fails, and that's the subject uh, you are referring to, then we have a, another Kim's kit that we shall use. Uh, now, if all the other Kim's kits available fail, then now that's when we resort to the fiscal register. So that is the procedure. And that procedure is there. The registers are printed. They'll be available at the polling station, but they'll be sealed and not be used in the manner then the High Court had directed that we use it simultaneously with the Kim's kit. Yes. Yeah, um, my name is O'Brien, and I work with the State Broadcaster KBC. Uh, two questions. Uh, how prepared are you to abide by the ruling of the High Court by Justice Bokore uh, for you to include the manual register as part of uh, uh, the uh, voter identification process? And number two, uh, UD has gone to court. Um, oh, were, were, were you here when I was uh, making my presence? <laughs> I, I, I've just said the court has already pronounced itself. The Court of Appeal has already pronounced itself on that issue and has overturned the High Court judgment. And uh, right now, where we are, we have reverted back to the Court of Appeal uh, decision. Yeah, thank yes. you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Wawiru Nyamura from Inoro TV. You have not given instructions as, as far as Panakandipi is concerned where ballot papers were destroyed. That, that is that, 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 that's not true. There were no ballot papers destroyed in Tarakaniti. What was destroyed were booths, a few booths, uh, by some uh, individuals who attacked the vehicle uh, and some stumps. Yeah, and those are items we have in plenty. Uh, we shall replace them. I think the process of replacing them uh, is ongoing. No ballot papers were destroyed. Security items, ballot papers, Kim's kits are escorted under heavy uh, police security. And uh, the, those ones are all safe, safe for the cases that we have mentioned in, the, in our presser. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Uh, are you from Citizen TV? I need a specific question here because uh, my colleague Mgrimi did uh, mention this point, and it's the case of Kakamega. Mombasa, Kakiliba constituency, and Pokot South, leading to the suspension of the poll process in these four respective areas. What's your level of communication with the printing farm in Greece, which is the informed Lycos? And here I suppose because the Kenyan people are paying billions and they want value out of this election. What's your level of communication with them in the foreseeable future so that such incidences don't happen in the owner of Chibukati when your turn expires in January next year? Number two, on security, there are regions in this country that uh, often face security challenges and it's not the same as others. For example, the northern frontier counties that share long porous border with Somalia, which is still in political instability case. What's your level of engagement with the security agencies? Because you talked about 150,000 personnel from the National Police Service to 46,229 polling stations mathematically. The event in security problems exceed your current security preparations and process, what then happens in such areas? Yeah, then let's deal with that. I will ask uh, uh, Marjan to say something about the, the, pilot, uh, the printers, uh, Inform Lycos, and the Commissioner Wandere, who is heading the security uh, team subcommittee here. I think they even had a meeting today. They meet tw twice a day. Uh, the, to address the issues you have raised on the, those volatile areas. Then we can continue the other questions. Yeah. Asante. Nigel Francis Ode uh, Kutoka. Uh, uh, can they finish that first? Asante. Yeah, Marija. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, yes, we have got a very high level of uh, communication with the firm. One is uh, we have got the Contract Implementation, implementation Committee that is responsible for confirming that technically all our materials are basically okay. And then uh, two, we also have another level of communication. The final one actually is between myself and the, and the CEO of the InfoLycos. When this incident basically uh, came to our notice, 
I also spoke to the CEO of the InfoLycos, and uh, they acknowledged that the error was actually only on their side, and that they are going to uh, make good the, the printing of the, of the ballot paper. So we have got communication at all levels, up to the top level. Thank you very much. Uh, on the issue of security, and thank you very much for that question, we are fully engaged with the national security agencies, police, GSU, and uh, we are collaborating. In all those areas where there is uh, high insecurity, ballot papers are being airlifted to the various polling stations, and the government security agencies are su surveying and acting on any issue regarding to this insecurity. So we have no problem. I do not want to give you the details, but it's covered, and nobody will fail to vote because of insecurity, even in those areas. It has been confirmed to us, the action that the police are taking and other security agencies and to make sure that everybody will vote who wants to vote. So don't worry about that. Okay, we can take some three more questions, then we Sorry. run. Yeah. Naito Francis Ode, kutoka Apple TV. So I'm going to go to the Mavo. Uli Zungumzia, Kumba Kuna Zile Kimski Tambazo Zimeza Toleo, Kumba Kuna Tota Kuna Tumia Fingerprints. Jay. Umezingatia, ama tu umezingatia vipi wale, wale mavu ambao waoni, awasiki na hata labda wana mikona kwa za kutia pale vidole. Ok, another? Or that's the last one? I want to talk about uh, uh, the same question uh, I just asked. On this sort of uh, uh, people with disability. And uh, how, how uh, is a commission uh, we are organized on the, on the platform of uh, people with disability here in Kenya on the voting side? My name is Anthony. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, Vice Chair, you can uh, deal with that. Yeah. My name is Nicholas Dele from Cast Media Group. Uh, Chairman Mombasa and Kagamega previously during approval had issues. And now you have brought it to our attention that also it has issues that postponing of these elections they are coming. Now, Chairman, somebody could be curious that this could be a political play rather than technicalities that you're saying about the printing factories. What do you say of that? You, you, that's not true. That is your imagination. <laughs> we don't uh, do political uh, games. We do election management. And I think the ballot paper printers have accepted their mistake. And uh, we shall ensure that the voters in those areas are able to elect the leaders of their choice as soon as possible. So there's no politics uh, involved. I may also appreciate that I think the order to print those particular ballot papers also went a bit, it was some of the last ones being, which were printed. and. Uh, uh, the, there could be a little, uh, I don't know what happened at the printers, but they have accepted that they made an error. So don't read any mischief in it. And uh, one more thing, uh, the candidates will be the same. The ones who are to contest now and maybe a few weeks from now will be the same, same candidates. They will not change. Vice Chair, please answer the question on the table. Yeah. Um, Asante. Swali la ulemavu limeulizwa kwa Kiswahili kwa hivyo pengine ingelijibu kwa Kiswahili. Um, kama mtu hana vidole tutatumia nambari yake ya kitambulisho. Kwa hivyo kuna njia mbili za ku search mtu katika Kimskit. Kwanza tunatumia fingerprints lakini kama hana vidole ama zime watu wengine huwa wamepaka hina. Hivyo basi Kimskit inakuwa shida kwa identify kutumia Kims, eh, fingerprints. Kwa hivyo watu kama hao tutatumia ID card number, tuki type katika Kimskit kwa hivyo identity yake zao zitaonekana. Watapewa ballot papers, waezi kuvote. Asante, kina swali. Naitua kuna kwa kutoka Azam TV Tanzania. Hikuwa kwa kumbado kwenye kwa ilisho kwa uchaguzi kwenye hai maine matano. Maine. 
Monday, yes. Yeah. Um, nye kama tume ya uchaguzi na mipaka, na wajibika vipi kwa sababu ili jema mwale kwa namna moja mingine inakona kusafisha usumbufu kwa wananchi hasa katika haya maeneo. Lakini vile vile kuna gharama nyingine ambazo wananchi kwa namna moja ama nyingine wataingia ama tume itaingia. Mewajibika vipi katika hii? Kuonyesha kwa mana nye na uchungu kwa kwa uzebe uwa kwa mtokea. Bwana siyo amesema kuwa shida ilitokea kwa wale ambao wanachapisha makaratasi si uzembe ya tume na wamekubali wamekubali kuwa watakaramia hiyo hiyo makaratasi wakichapisha tena mara ya pili wananchi watakuja kufanya tena nafikiri wata, wanapenda hiyo ni chukumu la wananchi kuchakua viongozi wao na vile hiyo maneno yametokea lazima tufanye vile tumefanya na tuna nafikiri wananchi watakuja I, i don't i don't think there's a problem they will come and vote yeah thank you yeah another question uh, yes, i'm calling someone from the daily nation and my question is are we really are you really prepared as a as a commission or your preparation are just on paper because of the things we've been seeing then another thing is about which things be specific the mix ups which mix up uh, mix up in what uh, in in uh, kakamega we have explained that yes so yeah, yeah. are you really prepared or these are just things you are saying but on the ground uh, things are different then then the other question is you asked you called us for a a press conference at 12 yes and we are doing it at 5 yeah. at 6 no, no, at 5 these are the anxieties that the wait times when 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 we have the long wait times these are the things that create anxieties and uh, will will lead to like kenyans starting to cook things up in their minds that maybe the commission is up to something so what is going on at ibc Yeah what what's going on at IBC has been summed up in our press briefing this afternoon <laughs> and I started off by saying the commission is ready for elections we have asked Kenyans to turn up in large numbers tomorrow and vote for leaders of their choice we have also opened up the polling process and encouraged media to work with us this journey I expect that uh, tomorrow the reports will be that Kenyans are swarming polling stations to vote. Your your statement uh, I think uh, I've nothing to say about it. <laughs> All I want to say is our apologies for not being here at 12 because of many many other activities which uh, we, we were actually waiting for us all over the this particular center. But we shall continue engaging the media and we are committed to ensuring that uh, Kenyans get what they deserve a free fair and credible election Chairman, thank you very much Chairman, yes my name is sarah i'm already i'm on this side here okay. <laughs> my name is sarah from yes. the south african broadcasting corporation yes, sarah. are you worried that this last minute hitches may actually affect the confidence uh, by the voters on the process and uh, i'd also want to know if you have communicated Uh, to the candidates in these four polling uh, areas and what was their reaction to the fact that uh, you will not be on the ballot this time but the, the election will happen later we have uh, 47 county election managers and they, the the county election managers in those respective areas have uh, accordingly communicated to, to their respective uh, the candidates it is it is uh, Sorry? Are you worried about the confidence of the process by voters concerning these last minute features? Oh, uh, is there any commissioner who wants to answer that question? <laughs> I'm I'm not uh, worried. It's normal in an operation to have uh, issues like what we went through today. It's normal that uh, papers can be moved up up and down. It's normal that uh, what the printers experienced happens is i believe human error 
Of course, it, it worries us that we wanted a 100% perfect uh, deliver of materials. But this has happened, and we must deal with it. And I believe in the best interest of the country, uh, it will not be uh, appropriate. I mean, we, we have to own the issue and deal with it, and we shall ensure that the voters in those four elective positions uh, get a chance to elect leaders of their choice as soon as possible. So that is, uh, is, uh, is our concern, and I believe that uh, they will understand and be able to turn up on the day we shall schedule. Yeah, thank you. My name is uh, Moja William from uh, TV47. My question uh, will be relating to campaigning after, despite uh, the deadline by IEBC. A good example is of Raila Odinga, whereby attending a church service, uh, and he will be a na pia rais wa Kenya akihudhuria vyombo vya habari alionekana kumpigia debe rais wa Uganda maybe what action will you take to persons who are campaigning after the deadline that you shared thank you yeah thank you for that question i have not received any complaint on my desk about any of the two persons you have mentioned campaigning uh, so I will, I will not make any comments on that. As far as the commission is concerned, campaigns ended on Saturday at 6 p.m. And I'm not aware of uh, uh, what you're calling campaigns. Have not, we have not received any complaint, and I'm not privy to the, the statements which were made. Unless you, you have any issues or anybody writes to the commission, then we shall deal with it. Um, my question is still on the... Uh, the ballot papers were by I'm Sarafina Robi from KBC. Uh, my question is on the printing farm. You said that you're in communication with it. So, uh, is it the same farm that is going to reprint these ballot papers? And if yes, who is going to shoulder the financial burden? Okay, I, I think I answered that, but uh, let, let me say it again. Clarification of that. Actually, it's repeating. Let me repeat what I said, uh, what the CEO said. The, the printing firm has owned the mistake and they'll meet the cost of reprinting those ballot papers. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. UDA is complaining that some of their agents are not in accredited. Is this a matter that they're raising here? Not yet, but we are meeting the presidential uh, agents uh, immediately after this. And I believe if they have an issue, then it can be addressed. Because the whole team is here, the whole IBC team is here. If any political party or agent have an issue, please raise during our meeting, which is immediately after this uh, presser. Chairman, yeah. yeah. the, the legal ballots contribute to the delay and all this matter. There are so many legal ballots. Did it contribute to this? The delay in delivery? In delivery, the mix-up. I know about delay in delivery because our due date, last date was 29th of uh, last month, but because of the legal cases, then we, the printers pushed the date to 3rd of August. As to the mix-up, the printers have owned it. Uh, they have not told us why there was that mix-up. Maybe in their report, when they share their report with us, then we can be able to communicate to the country. So I don't want to attribute it to any other issues. Yeah. Thank you so much. We will proceed on to the, we are inviting you to the lighting of the peace torch ceremony at the auditorium. The commission is available for further engagement. Let's keep engaging and we will continue answering your questions. Thank you. Thank you.